Today I'm going to be showing you how to use Fusion 360 to generate G-code for the CNC module on your Snapmaker machine. So initially I tried to use the Snapmaker Lubin software that Snapmaker comes with and I just found it to be a little bit limited when it comes to controlling the CNC function. So after doing some research, I found that you could use Fusion 360 to control the CNC module on your Snapmaker instead of the Snapmaker Lubin software. Now there are some videos about this on YouTube, but I felt that I could simplify the process and make it a little bit easier for you guys because I definitely had a hard time at first. And I'm gonna try to uh, lay it out step by step so it's kind of easier to follow along. So the first thing we're going to do is head over to snapmaker.com Then we're going to go to products and snapmaker 2.0 Then you're going to head over to downloads And scroll down And right here you can see at the bottom there's configuration files and tool libraries and that's what we need contains a bunch but the one we're going to be using is fusion 360 so go ahead and download that one and unzip it then it's going to have an assets folder and at the bottom of fusion 360 configuration folder with the tool library and the config files to install these uh, files we just downloaded you're going to go head over to fusion 360 and go to the manufacturing workspace. Then you're gonna to go to manage, tool library. You can see I already have them installed under the local tab, but we're gonna reinstall them so I can show you how. You click library and then import. And just go to where you have where you downloaded them and the snapmaker 2.0 cnc tool library is the one you want open and there you go all the tools that come stock with the snapmaker 2.0 are going to be listed right here so for this demonstration i'm going to be using this simple uh, hexagonal like honeycomb shaped thing i made this in fusion 360 for this demo and if you want to follow along you can go ahead and download it in the description of this video okay so what we need to do first is go and create a new setup so what we have to do is set our stock size and the orientation of the model so for the model orientation we're going to go ahead and select z-axis and for this you want it to be on the top of your model because that's where the machine is going to start cutting from and for the stock settings i like to add a little bit on the top if we are going to do a cut that that's going all the way through because this offset is going to make the machine go a little bit past the bottom of the model and so you'll get clean holes all the way through and then I also like to add a little bit on the side. Just keep in mind when you add a top offset to the stock, it's gonna cut deeper than the actual model height. So make sure you put a spoil board underneath when you're cutting so it doesn't damage your CNC platform. So now that we've set the stock size, it's time to go in and tell the machine what type of cuts to make. And because this is a relatively simple model, we can go ahead and use 2D adaptive clearing. So the first setting we're gonna change is the tool. So go ahead and select tool. And then pick whatever bit you're gonna be using for this project. I'm using the 3.175 millimeter one, and it's a ball end. So I'll select that and hit okay. And what's nice about this is when you go ahead and select the tool, 
it'll automatically put in all the presets that are gonna work for the Snapmaker machine. So now we're in the passes tab and I usually set the tolerance as 0.1, the optimal load at 1.27. And keep in mind, the higher the optimal load, the more stress it's gonna be putting on the bit. And for the cutting radius, that's, that's good to leave at the default. And go ahead and check multiple depths. We're gonna set this at two millimeters. And this is the maximum roughing uh, step down. The higher it is, the deeper each cut is gonna be. And then make sure you uncheck stock to leave. We don't have to change anything in the linking tab except for uh, the ramp type, which we're gonna change to plunge. Okay, now move over to the geometry tab, which is where we're gonna select all the shapes that we're going to cut. So I'm just selecting all the hexagons that are on the inside, and I'm gonna speed this part up. Okay, now that they're all selected, we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And this part is gonna take a while to load because this is when it's actually generating the toolpath. So once that is loaded, you'll be able to see exactly what the machine is going to do and so what we can do is right click on that adaptive clearing and then hit simulate this will allow you to see exactly what movements the machine is going to make and it'll basically just simulate exactly what it's going to do which is nice so you know uh, nothing's going to go wrong or it's not taking too deep of cuts Okay, so now that the inside holes are cut out, it's time to go ahead and make another cut. This one is called 2D Contour. This is great for cutting stuff out. So we're gonna use the same um, tool we used last time and go over to Geometry and select the perimeter on the bottom of the model. Now it's important when you're cutting stuff out to add tabs so that the model doesn't shift while it's being cut and then mess something up so we're going to put in tabs at points that we select going to go to the midpoints of each edge and put a tab go to the passes tab and head down to multiple depths for the maximum roughing distance, I like to use two millimeters. And everything else should be good. I'm just gonna simulate it one more time to make sure everything's good. Right click 2D contour and then hit play. And that looks perfect. Okay, the last check we gotta do before we send it to the machine is see the machine time to make sure it's not something outrageous, like three days or something. And it's looking good, it's only an hour and 34 minutes. So that's perfect. Close that. Then now we're going to export the G code. So right click setup and go down to post process. All right, so click the three dot button right there and desktop or wherever you saved the configuration files. Fusion 360 and hit select folder. Okay, now this is very important. Make sure you set this to Marlin, generic snap maker Marlin. And then this is the output folder. So I have it to my desktop so it's easy to find. And then once you're ready, just go ahead and hit post. And then you can rename it, whatever you want. 
Okay, and once you rename the file, it's going to give you this huge G code file. And you can just go ahead and close out of this. But what we really need is the file that it exported to your desktop. So you're gonna put that file onto the thumb drive or however you get it to your machine and it'll be ready to start it. Okay, so now you're gonna clamp your material to the board and install the bit that you used in the program. Make sure to tighten that really tight. Select the file. Now what we're gonna do is set the origin in the center of the material, but a little bit above so that we can see, run the boundary and see if it's gonna hit any clamps or hit any of the sides. And as you can see, it's not hitting anything, so we're gonna lower it down and use the calibration card to get the right height. Set the origin again. And run the boundary one more time just to make sure. And then you're ready to start. Right, that's the end of the tutorial if you found it helpful in any way make sure to drop a like and tune in to part two where i'm going to be going over the 3d cuts see you guys later